Okay, so for today, we'll be discussing the different types of cybercrime. Although, sa part na, sa module na to, parang summary lang siya. Sa next module, dun yung in-depth na definition ng mga types of cybercrime na to. So, although many traditional crimes such as embezzlement, robbery, and burglary are now facilitated by a new tool, specifically computers, other crimes are more specifically nga, computer related. The illegal production of computer software is very big business in Southeast Asian countries. Wow, yung yan naman kami. And particular, particularly in Hong Kong where illegal copies of popular software are sold for a fraction of their normal cost. For example, um, baka may mga gumagawa sa inyo, huwag na lang kayo na amin. Ang original na dito? Microsoft, yung may uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Ang pagkakaalam kong presyohan yan, 5,000 pesos yung original. Pero yung iba, pupunta sa Shopee, sa Lazada, tapos bibili doon ng mga around 100, 200 pesos lang. Tapos magkaka uh, software ka na nun sa computer mo. Ayun, mga illegal copies. At ang ibang term dyan ay yung mga crack. Okay. Software pirates, those who illegally reproduce and use software, cost manufacturers billions of dollars a year in lost revenue. Nga naman, di ba? Gumastos yung mga um, software companies na ito sa research, sa pagbabayad sa kanilang mga uh, software engineers at kung sino-sino pa. And then, gagawan lang ng kopya ng iba. Tipiratahin lang nila. So, nalulugi sila. Imbis na sa kanila bibili, bibili na lang ng pirata. Yung uh, users. Uh, US manufacturers have found hundreds of illegal copies of their software in legitimate firms such as Britain's General Electric Company or Atari Taiwan Manufacturing. So when illegal software is discovered, manufacturers attempt to bring both civil and criminal charges against the offenders and their companies. Part of the problem is the ease of making duplicate copies of computer software. Katulad ng mga napag-aralan natin last time, madali lang kasi gumawa ng kopya, lalo na kaya mo siyang store sa maliit na lagayan. Example, flash drive. Diba? Minsan, pwede pang nang isave sa cellphone. Kaya mahirap hulihin. This is comparable to the technological ease of illegally reproducing movies onto a DVD. Yan yung mga uso dati. Ewan ko kung uso pa yan ngayon. Yung mga pupunta sa sinihan, bibidyohan, tapos gagawa ng kopya. Uh, iba mas produce niya. Talagay sa CD. Ayun na, pirated. Pirated CDs. Some examples of Cybercrime include insider crime, malicious hacking, activities in support of criminal enterprises, telecommunications fraud, online pedophilia, and high-tech espionage. So, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the types of cybercrime, classify the different hackers, uh, discuss the theories behind hackers' motives. Okay, so dito muna tayo sa cybercrime offenses. It is divided into three according to Republic Act 10175, yung ating anti-cybercrime law. Ito, the first uh, category of cybercrime offenses are offenses against the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of computer data and systems. Yung una doon, is illegal access. This is the unauthorized access, of course, without right. Unauthorized nga eh, di ba? To a computer system or application. And then, you actually, you can uh, define it already based sa kanyang pangalan pa lang eh. Illegal access. Ibig sabihin, nagkaroon siya ng access doon sa computer system na yon or sa isang computer application ng 
uh, kung saan hindi naman talaga siya dapat magkaroon ng access doon, illegal na. Okay. Intercept, illegal interception, an authorized interception of any non-public transmission of computer data to, from, or within a computer system. So, pag sinabing interception, na intercept mo sila, naharang mo. Yung, eto nga, transmission of computer data papunta sa isang computer, galing sa isang computer, o within a certain computer system. Yun yung mga pag-intercept. Na, yun yung ano to, illegal interception. And then, number three is data interference. Unauthorized alteration, damaging, deletion, or deterioration of computer data. Binago mo yung isang data, sinira mo, inalis mo yung computer data or electronic document or electronic data message and including the introduction of transmission of viruses. Yun yung data interference. Nag-interfere ka, humarang ka, nagkaroon ka ng uh, pag-impede sa operation ng computer data na yun. And an authorized action can also be covered by this provision if the action of the person went beyond the agreed scope resulting to damages stated in this provision. And then number four is system interference, an authorized hindering or interference with the function of a computer or computer network by inputting, transmitting, damaging, deleting, deteriorating, altering, or suppressing computer data or program electronic document or electronic data messages and including the introduction of transmission of viruses. So, authorized action. Uh, yun, tignan. Okay, number five is misuse of devices. Okay, first one sa misuse of devices is the use, production, sale, procurement, importation, distribution, or otherwise making available without right of the following. First, a device, including a computer program designed or adapted primarily for the purpose of committing any of the offenses under this act. Or a computer password. So, ulit. Yung una, nag-use, nag-produce, nag-benta, uh, bumili, nag-import, nag-distribute, or yun na nga, otherwise, making available na hindi naman pwede ang isang device, pati yung kanyang computer program, at ang computer password access code or similar data. By which the whole or any part of a computer system is capable of being accessed with intent that it be used for the purpose of committing any of the offenses under this act. Um, Republic Act 10195. And then the other one for misuse of devices is the possession of an item referred to in paragraphs uh, 51AA dito, ito, yung device na to, and itong computer password na to or other similar data. Meron ka nun. So, possession. Above uh, 51AA or 51BB above with intent to use said devices for the purpose of committing any of the offenses under this section. So, gumamit ka ng mga ito, o ginawa mo to, itong number one, or meron ka nyan. They are both um, cybercrime offenses under misuse of devices. And the number six is cyber squatting. The acquisition of a domain name over the internet in bad faith to profit, mislead, destroy reputation, and deprive others from registering the same if such domain name is similar or identical or confusingly similar to an existing trademark registered with the appropriate government agency at the time of the domain name registration. Uh, identical or in any way similar with the name of a person other than the registrant in case of a personal name and acquired without right or with intellectual property interest in it. Pag sinabing cyber squatting, uh, okay. gamitin natin yung term na squatter. Diba? Kapag 
ikaw ay nakatira sa isang squatters area, nag squat ka doon. At pag sinabi nating nag squat ka, hindi ka talaga taga doon. Hindi mo property yon. Gets nyo? Gets nyo naman siguro yon. Yun yung squat, uh, pagiging squatter. Or squatting. And when we say cyber squatting, gumamit ka ng domain name ng iba. Or, ang ginagamit mong domain name is, sabi nga dyan, confusingly similar, lalo na kung government agency yon. For example, uh, www.dnr.gov.ph Yun yung, for example, uh, domain name ng DENR. Sabi natin yun yung legit. Uh, ang ginamit mo, www.dnr.gov.ph uh, Kunyari, yun ang ginamit mo. So, that is also considered a cyber squatting. Kasi confusingly similar, anong pagkakaiba nila? Isang letra lang, dinagdagan mo lang ng isa pang H sa dulo. So, yun, that's uh, illegal. Okay? Okay. Another type of cybercrime offense are computer-related offenses. Ito na yung number two. Computer-related offenses. Number one is computer-related forgery. This is uh, the input alteration or deletion of Kung papaano ang forgery sa document, ganun din ang uh, computer-related forgery. Ang kaibahan lang is gawa nga siya sa computer. Soft copy siya. Uh, pinapakita yung document na yun as if it were authentic. Talagang mukha siyang legit. At kapag hindi naman well-versed, um, babasa no, talagang i-interpret niya ang ah, legit ng document na to. And kapag gumamit ka, isa, nag-forge ka, ikalawa, ginamit mo yung forge na uh, document. So, that is under computer-related forgery. Another one is computer-related fraud, unauthorized input, alteration, or deletion of computer data or program or interference in the functioning of a computer system, causing damage thereby with fraudulent intent. So provided that if no damage has yet been caused, the penalty imposable shall be one degree lower. Ayan. Uh, unauthorized input, alteration, or deletion of computer data or program, or in the interference in the functioning of a computer system. That is computer-related fraud. And then, we have computer-related identity theft. So, kung papaano ang identity theft, um, gumamit ka ng identity ng iba. I think may nakwento na ako sa inyo tungkol sa pinanggalingan kong school na may ganitong case kung saan uh, gumawa ng Google account ng estudyante, tapos ginamit niyang pangalan doon is yung sa instructor niya, ginamit niyang picture doon ay yung sa instructor niya rin. Kaya yung mga kaklase niya, akala yung instructor talaga yun. Pala, pinagtripan lang sila. Pero yun, pasok yun sa computer-related identity theft. The intentional acquisition, use, misuse, transfer, possession, alteration, or deletion of identifying information Sabing identifying information, it may be your name para matukoy ka, para ma-identify ka ng isang tao. It may be your name, your pictures, mga yan. 
uh, identifying information belonging to another, whether natural or juridical without right. Pag sinabi natin natural person, tayo. As in, tayo na individual. We are natural persons. Pag sinabi namang juridical, ito yung isang entity, isang, sabi na natin, company. For example, AUF. Yun. It's a uh, juridical person. Uh, Jollibee is also a juridical person. Okay. So provided that if no damage has yet been caused, the penalty imposable shall be one degree lower. Maga, nahuli pa lang siya. Pero wala pa talagang uh, effect yung ginawa niya. Okay. Cyber crime, another cyber crime offense type is content related offenses. This is the last uh, type of cyber crime offense under RA 101 Content, ibig sabihin yun, nilalaman na niya. So first is cyber sex. The willful engagement, maintenance, control, or operation directly or indirectly of any lascivious exhibition of sexual organs or sexual activity with the aid of a computer system for favor or consideration. Naguhubad sa harap ng uh, camera ng computer niya or any device. Tapos... Binabayaran siya. Kapag ikaw ang nagko-control nun, kung ikaw ang nagme-maintain, nag-ooperate nung mga uh, live streaming na yun, then you are guilty of eto, cyber sex. Okay? Another one is child pornography. The unlawful or prohibited acts defined and punishable by Republic Act 9775 or the Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009 committed through a computer system. Provided that the penalty to be imposed shall be one degree higher than that provided for in RA 9775. Kasi nga, ito... Uh, it was committed through a computer system, therefore, mas mabilis siyang kumalat. Dahil yun na nga, kapag nag-live stream ka, agad-agad, madami nang makakapanood. And then, number three, under content-related cybercrime, or cyber offenses, unsolicited commercial communications. The transmission of commercial electronic communication is the use of computer system which seek to advertise, sell, or offer for sale products and services or prohibited unless there is prior affirmative consent from the recipient. So, pwede naman din siya, basta uh, pwede ka namang mag-transmit ng commercial electronic communication gamit ang isang computer system, basta may paalam ka. Affirmative consent from the recipient. And then, the primary intent of the communication is for service and or administrative announcements from the sender to its existing users, subscribers, or customers. And then, number three is that the following conditions are present. The commercial electronic communication contains a simple, valid, and reliable way for the recipient to reject Receipt of further commercial electronic messages from the same source. And then, the commercial electronic communication does not purposely disguise the source of the electronic message. Kasi yung iba, um, yun na nga, merong disguise. Mukhang legit na mail, pag kinlik mo, magkaka-problem ka pa. And then, commercial electronic communication does not purposely include misleading information in any part of the message, in order to induce the recipients to read the message. And then, cyber libel. This is the unlawful or prohibited acts of libel as defined in Article 355 of the Revised Penal Code as amended, committed through a computer system or any other similar means which may be devised in the future. So, kung papaano ang actual na libel, yung may prerequisite siya na kapag nagsabi ka ng impormasyon 
na hindi totoo laban sa isang tao at kailangan kasi merong publication sinabi publication na publish siya either sa TV sa radyo sa newspaper sa vlog sa blog yung mga yun that's called publication na publish siya kasi madami na ang nakakita so yun kung paano ang actual na libel na nakalagay dito sa RTC ganun din yung sa cyber libel ang kaibahan gumamit lang ng computer system Okay. Other cybercrime offenses under RA-10175 is aiding or abetting in the commission of cybercrime. So, lahat ng nabanggit natin kapag nag-aid ka, nag-abet ka ng mga cybercriminals, then you are also guilty of this. Any person who willfully abets or aids in the commission of any of the offenses enumerated in this act shall be held liable. Then, attempt in the commission of cybercrime. Any person who willfully attempts to commit any of the offenses enumerated in this act shall be held liable. So, alam niyo naman siguro yung stages of crime. So, pati yung attempted na stage is also punishable. Okay. Typology of hackers. So, at the heart of cybercrime are the hackers. These people are those are the ones with the skills to commit the crimes. And an interesting way to look at them is to focus upon the lifestyles and personalities of hackers. Take it for what it's worth. None of these personality characteristics have been validated by any empirical test. But first, uh, the typology comes from, first are called pioneers. Those who are fascinated by evolving technology and explore it without knowing exactly what they are going to find. Kaya pioneer kasi pakilamero sila. Kaya hindi nila alam kung ano yung mga mahahanap nila at kung sakaling may mahanap sila din sila yung una. Kaya nga pioneers. And then we also have scams. Hackers with sense of fun who intend no overt harm. Mga malalakas ang trip. Then number three are explorers. Hackers motivated by a delight in breaking into computer systems. Yung natutuwa sila sa challenge na mga hack. The more geographically distant or more secure the target is, the greater the delight. Kumbaga, natsa-challenge kasi sila. Kaya mas natutuwa sila kapag uh, mas mahirap yung system na ihahack nila. And then we have game players, those who enjoy defeating software or system protection. The hacking seen as a sort of game itself. Then we have vandals, those who cause damage for no apparent gain. Parang yung mga nagkakondak na vandalism, sulat-sulat lang sila, pero wala naman silang makukuha pa kinabang. Actually, napagastos pa nga sila sa pintura, eh, di ba? Ganun din yung mga vandals na type of hacker. Then we have addicts. Yan, familiar kayo sa term na yan, di ba? Nerds who are literally addicted to hacking and computer technology. Okay. Uh, that's the first typology, first type of hackers. Another typology of hackers describes the relationship of the hacker to their computer. Number one is the play pet. Uh, balikan natin. Relationship of the hacker to their computer. Ito yung type na to ha. Hindi ka tulad nung una, basta uh, yung type of hacker lang, kung anong klaseng uh, personality meron siya. So ito, eh, first is play pen, in which the computer is seen as a toy. So ganun ang tingin ng hacker sa kanyang computer, para laruan. And then we have Fairyland, where cyberspace is an unreal world where wrong cannot be done. Dahil nga, cyberspace yun, walang uh, physical destruction na magagawa. Ganun yung tingin ng mga hackers na to, Fairyland. Then we have Land of Opportunity, where there's nothing wrong with exploiting a vulnerable system. Tingin lang nila, uh, 
walang mali kapag nag ka sa isang system. In your land of opportunity. And then toolbox in which the computer is just a way to get other things done. Then we have cookie jar with the computer as a place to go borrow things now and again. Kasi diba, sa cookie jar, uh, mukuha ka ng cookies, parang nakadeposito doon yung mga cookies ninyo. Okay. Uh, and then, word game where hostile feelings are vented against machines rather than people. Kumbaga, yung mga hindi magandang nararamdaman ng isang hacker, doon niya nilalabas sa machine imbis na sa tao mismo. Okay. Famous cases of hacking and famous hackers. So, ito si Kat Pinkrunch. Actually, nabanggit na natin to Parang module one or two pa lang. Si Kat Pinkrunch. In 1972, John Draper, also known as Captain Crunch, uh, realized that by blowing the whistle that came in Captain Crunch serial boxes, he could replicate the tones necessary to place free long-distance phone calls. He spent some time on probation and in prison and then went to work for Apple Computer. Ganyan naman, di ba? Uh, para mapaunlad mo yung isang institution, uh, pwede mong i-hire o magandang i-hire yung isang tao na nakabit doon sa system mo. Yun. Dahil mahal ang bayan nun, di ba? Kapag long distance ang pantawag, hindi naman tulad ngayon, may messenger na. So, para makakuha siya ng libre Yun, ginamit niya itong whistle na kasama sa Captain Crunch cereal boxes. Then we have Kevin Mitnick. In 1994, Mitnick was the world's most wanted hacker for breaking into digital equipment, computers, and stealing source codes. He served some years in prison and then became a book author. Galing daw. Na pagkakitaan pa nila yung krimen na ginawa nila. Then we have Kevin Paulson. In 1995, Paulson, a friend of Mitnick's, broke into FBI computers. He spent some years in prison and is now a computer security journalist. Okay. Mafia Boy. In 2000, this Canadian boy launched denial of service attacks on CNN, Yahoo, and other major websites. He ended up under house arrest and was restricted from using the internet. Ito, kilala nyo to, si Onel de Guzman. In 2000, the Filipino computer science student unleashed the I love you virus on the internet. He went unpu unpunished because the Philippines had no law covering the crime. 2000 yan. 2012 pa lang yung cybercrime law. Ewan ko nga, ba't di hinarin ng Pilipinas yan? Kinuatuloy siya ng ibang bansa. Okay. Theories regarding hacker motives. So, several researchers researchers have put forward theories which attempt to explain the reasons why hackers do what they do. Napaliwanag kung bakit nag-hack ang isang hacker. So, Taylor. According to Taylor in 1999, ito daw ang reasons kung bakit nag-hack ang isang hacker. Feelings of addiction. Urge of curiosity, boredom with the educational system. Baka masyado siyang matalino para doon sa tinuturo sa school. Enjoyment of feelings of power. Peer recognition in the hacking culture. Uh, and political acts. Then, according to Kilger in 2004, dahil sa pera, nabanggit nga natin sa mga past lessons natin na uh, majority sa mga cybercrime ngayon is financially motivated. Then ego, yung yabang na kaya kong i-break yung password nito. Bigyan mo ako ng 10 seconds. Uh, then entertainment, yung iba nga, nabanggit natin kanina, mga natutuwa daw sila kapag na-challenge uh, sila. Then cause or basic ideology, entrance to a social group dahil gusto mo belong ka and status. Then, La France in 2004, insider hacking. 
uh, economical profit, yun na nga yung pera. Revenge. Personal interest in the specific life, external pressure from people or organizations outside of the company. Such as organized crime or a family member. Yan yung uh, mga nagpe-pressure doon sa hacker. Kumbaga, kung siya lang, hindi niya namang gagawin kaso nga pinipressure siya ng iba. Then, according according to Fottinger and Zeigler, deep sense of inferiority, power achieved through hacking may increase self-esteem. May mga ganyan, di ba? Yung madaling example na lang. May mga estudyante ang tapang-tapang sa chat, pero sa personal, hindi naman pala marunong magsalita. <laughs> Yun, may mga inferiority sila. And they feel that in, or through the use of the computer or the internet, they are somehow powerful. And ganun din sa mga hackers. Uh, they feel powerful when they are able to hack. Then we have Schneier in 2003. So, ang mga uh, reasons daw kung bakit nagkakamit ng Hacking ang isang hacker is not for profit to satisfy intellectual curiosity. May mga ganong tao eh. Uh, para lang masukat nila yung sarili nilang talino. Nagawa sila na for men. For the thrill. To see if they can. Pero tignan ko lang kung kaya ko. Reputation, respect, acknowledgement, and self-actualization. Then according to Bryant and Marshall in 2008, early hackers naman to, to prove themselves against the authorities of the network with little malicious intent, self-esteem, and peer recognition. So basically, yabang lang sa ibang tao. Kaya gumagawa ng, kaya nag-hack. Nga, self-esteem. Peer recognition. Para kilalanin siya. Tingalain siya ng mga peers niya. And then in 2008, they, sila pa rin, ito naman yung mga later hackers, depended on depended on the type of hacker. For example, cyber terrorists motivated by ideals, professional criminals are motivated by profit. Internals were disgruntled or uh, they only seek revenge. Ayun. 